Okay. And hello and welcome to the Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. Today is September 14th. This is the EU US edition. And today we have myself and Bruno Verrockton. Uh, Mark isn't joining us today since he's at DevOps World Tour. And so uh, anyone else joins up, we'll welcome them as they come in. And for now, we'll go over the agenda. Uh, and so on the agenda, uh, some updates for Google Summer of Code. Uh, just check in on the process of choosing a plugin bomb the Java proposal that Mark has been working on and we've been discussing, uh, the addition of the platform uh, information section, uh, just a note on DevOps World Tour, uh, and some housekeeping stuff. Uh, because Mark is at DevOps World Tour, uh, Docs Office Hours Asia are canceled this week. Um, and you can see here, they even discussed it last week at the Asian Docs, Asia Docs Office Hours. So uh, that will not be happening later today. Uh, anything else that needs to go on the agenda? Or does that cover? I today? don't think so. Thank you, Kevin. Okay, cool. Uh, so first things first. So Google's com Google Summer of Code is getting to the end of the uh, timeline. So uh, the projects, for the most part, are complete, and we're just waiting on blog blog post recaps for many of them. Uh, just to go through them individually. So uh, for the doc compose for tutorials, uh, the project is complete. Uh, it does need some more work to deploy and be included in the documentation, um, but it's completed. So really great to hear there uh, and could use some help from the infra, infra team, uh, which might be something they are able to do during Hectoberfest, but we'll figure that out when it comes time to Hectoberfest um, to be determined on that front. Uh, the versioned site for Jenkins.io from Vandy is going amazingly well. Uh, it's still being worked on, it's still being developed, but they've done a lot of work since the last time uh, we've checked in with them. Uh, they've fixed a lot of the links that were there. Uh, they've updated a lot of the, uh, just kind of the front end there. Uh, and then they're using Gatsby as the front end and uh, GitHub for uh, both for review. Uh, and so, uh, the pull requests are arriving, the blog post layout arrived last, this is uh, last week now um, for Chris. And yeah, it looks like it's on track to complete in a couple of weeks. So um, looks like everything's going swimmingly there. Uh, final layout still under development. And uh, again, they fixed a lot of the linkage and navigation that was not working or uh, leading to the incorrect places last time. So uh, great work there. Thank you again to Vandy. Uh, GitLab plugin modernization uh, still being still being worked on. Uh, they need some more testing to compare all the new behavior, but uh, things are going well there. Uh, and then the plugin health score. Uh, so uh, Jagruti's posted a couple of different blog posts to recap the different probes that they've gotten launched. Uh, there is one that still is pending to be merged, and um, the rest are on the uh, Jenkins blog. So. Let's check that out. And I, I think a couple of them were actually called out in uh, last week's Docs Office Hours. So the number of open issues probe, the, uh, the deprecated JSR 305 imports probe. Uh, and then there is the one that still needs to be merged. But um, thanks to Jagruti for writing all those up. Uh, the one that was merged does, uh, Antoine Neveu had a couple comments on it. So uh, that one does need to be uh, re-examined just to see if those comments are um, applicable. They seem to be pretty uh, straightforward feedback about uh, what some extra context that could help um, in terms of using the abstract that Jagruti was uh, using and uh, just some context to help the readers understand a little bit more about the, the background of the probe. So um, we'll follow up there. Uh, but yeah, again, plugin health score is reaching, going towards the end of the project. Adrienne has returned from holidays, so he's here for guidance. And uh, yeah, it looks like the oh the final presentations happened earlier today, Bruno. Is that correct? Yes, we had great presentations and demos earlier today. All went fine, and I'm pretty happy with the results of this uh, season of GSOC for Jenkins. Uh, I think the progress are amazing. Frankly, I'm really proud of what the contributors managed to do this year. Congrats to everybody, mentors and contributors, and of course admins. Thank you, Jean-Marc, Alisa, and Chris for amazing work and bruno but that's okay um and, yeah, uh, i was just a admin. mentor you know i'm a wannabe admin i should be admin next year this year i was building my muscles you know 
most of the time mm -hmm. I was just looking at how things get done. And next year, that will be my my turn. Just into the regional, uh, uh, m m uh, wait. I just lost the wording. I'm dumb. Uh, anyway, yes, <laughs> I uh, it'll be fun. <laughs> Sorry. Don't Sorry. worry about me. Uh, and into the regional, just a few words admin. about Ashwater's project. Um, he came to the Jenkins Infra meeting this week and Damien Dupontal took some time to explain what was needed to get um, his work integrated into Jenkins Infra or Jenkins CI organization. You know, as you know, we have a chicken and egg problem. We can't modify the documentation pointing to the Ashutosh private, uh, not public, but own uh, repo, you know, it's not part of the Jenkins organization. So Damien gave a roadmap, a list of things to do. So now Ashutosh knows precisely what he has to do before his work gets integrated into the Jenkins CI or infra organization. And then we'll be able to make some PRs to modify the existing documentation. But at least we've got something to chew on. That's pretty cool. That's awesome. And that's the Docker Compose uh, project, correct, Bruno? You're right, yeah. Okay, just wanna make sure. Great. Uh, fantastic. And the recording for the um, Jenkins online meetup, will that be available later? Yeah, later on today, maybe or at uh, worst tomorrow morning, uh, it will be on the meetup page for this um, event. And of mm -hmm. course, on community.jenkins.io. Right. Cool. Just want to make sure that the recording will be available uh, at some point. Not, yeah, no rush on that, obviously. But yeah, just to make sure that uh, for anyone who's interested, they'll be able to watch it back later uh, and see the presentations. So really exciting. Great. Uh, anything else on the Google Summer of Code to discuss, Bruno, or does that cover everything? No, thank you. Okay, great. Uh, so next step on the agenda. So uh, the process of choosing a plugin bomb. Uh, so this was started as a discussion in this pull request. Uh, a, a user, Kyle, had submitted uh, this issue saying, you know, hey, like what, um, how do we know what, which version to choose? Is there uh, a way that we could determine which version is uh, for what purpose or um, just to make this process clear for users, uh, for end users? Uh, and so uh, there's been some discussion here. Uh, Mark provided some static examples that we could have. So stuff like the last Jenkins LTS to support Java 8, first one to support Java, to require Java 11, uh, most current one. So just stuff like that. Um, but uh, and potentially using the update CLI to do those updates and, for, and include and uh, kind of facilitate those updates accordingly. Um, there hasn't been any progress here uh, since we had started talking about it a couple weeks ago. Uh, and likely not to be more progress due to other priorities coming up. But uh, this is something that is happening currently in uh, the Jenkins repo. So it's uh, definitely worth discussing and uh, further considerations. Yes, uh, I will be glad to see the output of this discussion because as a Jenkins end user, I was often puzzled by which version should I choose and why? And frankly, I think the documentation does not exist yet. So that will be something nice for me to read. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and then and Mark had actually included um, something like this for the improving a plugin tutorial. Um, so this th it does exist. It is there, but um, there definitely could be some um, enhancements to the documentation to make that yes. more clear for users. There is uh, some slight inconsistency in the improved plugin tutorial when it comes to choosing the bomb because in some places like you are showing there it's 2.375 and in some other places it's 2.387 and mm -hmm. you just don't know why it's like that. Right. And so uh, this sort of thing would help to alleviate that issue, kind of just get rid of all the questions at that point and make it nice and simple and straightforward for users to understand which bomb they should be using. Yeah, thanks a lot for the user who raised this issue because I was, I've been puzzled several times, but I haven't taken the time to raise an issue about that. I should have. So thanks a lot, SFCGH Cleon Hall for that issue. <laughs> I think uh, I think his first name is Kyle. 
So uh, thank oh. you, Kyle. Yeah, <laughs> that, just to make life easier. I don't know how to pronounce uh, any of these things. So, but yeah, uh, so great to have that. Thank you again. And uh, yeah, so more to be done now. Uh, and then, so uh, next up on the agenda, so the Java uh, support and um, kind of just uh, Java for Jenkins proposal uh, that we've been discussing, Mark's been putting together. Uh, so there's the existing Google Doc where we there's all these potential options here. Uh, some things that have been included and updated this, tra this transition to a two plus two plus two Java support. Um, and so uh, the idea is that this would help line up with uh, the way that Java is doing its own releases. And so uh, this diagram visualizes and explains a little bit better, but so, uh, so we have J Java 11's availability, Jenkins on Java 11 when it was required, old is supported, uh, and just how we can support Java going forward for the foreseeable future. Um, and this is, you know, this is looking at all the way up to Java 33 and, you know, 2020, 2034. So uh, we're looking out real far, but uh, the idea is that this would help to align uh, Jenkins and Java support. Um, it also coincides with how uh, support is handled through the uh the vendors themselves and and other uh operating systems so like windows support um linux support stuff like that uh and yeah and then uh and it also goes into stuff like when we start to uh notify users that java 11 is uh, is heading towards end of life so getting that an admin monitor working uh for the java process as well as os uh, and then, yeah, Java 21 is uh, already being worked on by the infra team to include in Jenkins. Uh, it's going to be uh, the preview function, the preview version of Java 21 is available currently. Uh, yep. And when Java 21 is properly released in, uh, geez, like five. less than a week at this point. Yeah, yeah five, five days. days to go. Yeah. So uh, our goal is to have Java 21 supported in Jenkins uh, by, October, by October 23rd or so is roughly the uh, goal timeline we've given ourselves. So, um, but yeah, things are happening really quickly. Uh, this has been being worked on by a lot of developers and engineers. Um, thanks to Basil Crow, thanks to Damien Duportal, mm -hmm. Hervé Lemire, Stéphane, uh, who I forget, Stefan's last name right now, but uh, uh, Stefan Mayo. Yeah, Stefan Mayo. Because uh, I got another email from a different Stefan. Uh, yeah, <laughs> just thanks to everyone that's been working on this and testing and creating and uh, assisting with getting Java 21 into the Jenkins core. Uh, it's going really well so far uh, and is really huge in getting this, this Java proposal uh, off the ground the way we want it to. Yeah, uh, Tim Giacomo also worked on the JDK 21, and I think he was the first to propose to uh, have a um, Jenkins controller image with JDK 21 um, beta version. And this week I saw a new contributor to Jenkins appear and make a proposal. What about having an agent, a Jenkins agent using uh, JDK 21? And he has done the, the pull request after raising the issue and uh, Kenneth Salerno has also worked on that. So now we have the three Jenkins agents available for JDK 21, for ARM v7, S390X, PPC64 LE, Arch64 and also Alpine R64. So yes, even the community wants to see Jenkins on JDK 21, even with Docker. Yeah, clearly. That's awesome. Fan amazing. I, yeah, there was more people than I even knew working on this stuff and even more that I didn't, I still don't know working on this stuff. So that's really incredible to hear and super encouraging that everyone's really excited about it and wants to yeah. see it happen. So that's great. That's amazing. Um, and uh, yeah, just, just fantastic to hear and actually see in action. Um, you know, this is a, a community effort and it's being done really, I mean, really wholeheartedly, which is nice. Um, and then, uh, in addition to this, uh, I'm going through the documentation. Uh, 
um, to make sure that this all works with 20, Java 21. Hmm. Um, and so right now I'm going through the guided tour. Everything seems to be going well there. There's uh, the Node.js, the Python, uh, and the Maven tutorials as well, which we need to go through. But uh, yeah, for the most part, uh, everything's going okay there. There are some documentation needs for Java 21 um, that are similar to the Java 17 doc needs. So uh, thankfully it won't be that, thankfully we'll just need to add some documentation there and adjust the existing documentation. Um, but yeah, just making sure that the tutorials and a lot of the instructional information is working. Uh, cool. Anything else on the Java uh, topic, Bruno? No, thank you, Gabe. Okay. okay. Uh, so the next step, so uh, adding the existing requirements, support policy documentation to the assistive and administration section. So, uh, so I've created a new chapter for this called platform information. Uh, we had, uh, Mark had taken it to the docs office hours Asia to get some review and, and uh, triage because I was having a couple issues. They were able to figure that out. Mark submitted some pull requests to my repo to get that all cleared up. So now it's properly uh, organized and I found the missing piece that I didn't have and now it works. Uh, I need to update the index page text itself because uh, I had initially just put some um, placeholder text in there while I was trying to make sure it was working. Uh, now that it is working properly, I can do the rest of it. So uh, yeah, so everything's looking good there. Um, I've got the next steps for that. I just need to get the text put in. So um, hopefully I'll have that pull request created within the next week or so. Uh, next up, so DevOps World Tour has officially started as of this week. Uh, yesterday was the first day. Today is the second day. And uh, between yesterday and today, so that's the New York session. Uh, Mark is currently there giving a talk. Maybe it's already he's already done his talk, but either way, he's in New York hanging out at uh, DevOps World Tour. Uh, and there will be, uh, after each DevOps World Tour uh, session uh, day event, uh, there'll be a Jenkins after hour session, talk, you know, let's talk about Jenkins. Um, that'll be held after each conference. And um, yeah, it'll just be a nice opportunity to talk, talk Jenkins with uh, Mark and whoever else might be attending. Um, and then uh, we also have the Singapore and London locations where uh, Olivia, Olivier Lamy and Tim Jacome will be speaking respectively. Uh, we just published a really short blog post about it, um, just to give you a quick intro to who's going to be there and what the what the deal is, um, and that what that let's talk about Jenkins uh, deal is. So um, just a nice little intro here, but. Uh, yeah, DevOps World Tour is currently happening. If you have not uh, registered yet and still want to attend, there are several locations and dates still there. Um, and you have a couple weeks until Chicago, Silicon Valley, Singapore, and uh, thankfully London is until the end of November. So plenty of time to still register and attend. Uh, and then the last thing I had on the agenda, again, just a quick housekeeping note, uh, Docs Office Hours Asia is canceled this week since Mark is at DevOps World Tour. Uh, so uh, anyone attending then, well, you don't attend, just don't. There's nothing to attend at that point. <laughs> uh, one very last thing before we wrap it up. I yeah, think there is a newsletter draft uh, going on for the August months. Um, of yes. course, it is much shorter than what we had the other month because, of course, during August, people go on vacation. So not so much happened during the August months. So there will be little to, you know, little to read, but that's okay. Yeah, no, great call out, Bruno. Uh, I saw the draft and I remembered I have to go through it and update my section a little bit. I think there was an update, but um, yeah, the August newsletters. Uh, currently a pull request in the Jenkins repo. So that, um, yeah, we just need to get that up. And that hopefully we'll get that published within the next few days. Yep. So, uh, yeah, no, great. Awesome. Thank you very much, Bruno, for uh, You're welcome. calling that out. Uh, and that covers the agenda that we had for today. Uh, anything else to discuss, throw out there, share, or does that cover everything, Bruno? I think you covered everything. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah, cool. All right, great. So then 
Um, we'll go ahead and stop the recording here. It'll be available 24 to 48 hours. Uh, thank you for joining as always. And uh, until next time, see you then. Bye.